Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have Tunde Kolawole who joins us on Off the Press. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining. Uh, we start off with a Daily the Trust newspaper. All right, Daily Trust uh, is what we start off with this morning. As boldly written on the uh, front page, it says, Despite Buhari's assurance, 23 Kaduna trained passengers spent six months in captivity. Very saddening. And a president should redeem pledge, a victim's family is quoted to say, how the remaining captives can be rescued. Ex-AIG is quoted. These are riders you find underneath the board caption. Campaigns, Atiku, Tunubu, Kwankwaso, Obi, 14 others battle for 84 million votes. Reps fume over abandoned 797 billion Naira Abuja Kaduna Kanu Road project. No state authorized to buy automatic weapons, presidency replies Akiri Dolu. And CBN raises interest rate to record 15.5% in 20 years. How my successors or the other leaders will emerge in 2023. Buhari. APC PDP orders yet to submit 2019 election expenses report. That's what INEC is saying. And uh, just before we move away from the Daily Trust, another headline says 23 dead, 116,084 displaced in Benway flood. These are the writers you find this morning on the caption. Let's go over to the nation uh, with some interesting stories this morning. Nigerians face harder times as CBN raises interest rate. That's the lead story on the front page of the nation newspaper. And may feel a hike from 14% to 15.5% to contain rising inflation. Experts fault policy. Right, uh, seems it's having uh, some difficult times there. Uh, suspended Ogun governor's aid. Rufai jailed five years. Talked about it earlier. Atiku, I'll be stepping stone for Igbo president. Federal government borrows one trillion naira to fund subsidy, says DMO. Oil theft, Tumpolo's gunboats storm Niger Delta creeks. Presidency to Akeridolu. Uh, no state can arm security outfits. No state can arm security outfits. Cautions against politicization of security. Court nullifies Ogun PDP governorship primary uh, Alero's ex-Senate leaders tickets. All right, some interesting development there in Ogun State. All 18 presidential candidates face litigations says Inek. Interesting times <laughs> for them. We have uh, Kerry Deleuze, mom for burial November 12. NDLA sets ablaze 18 or 1.8 tons rather of cocaine that uh, a multi-million dollar cash they made some time ago. Those are some of the stories on the front page of The Nation. Away from The Nation, we have uh, the Punch newspaper now. The Punch says, 2023, Atiku and governors land in Abuja. Tinubu orders delay campaigns. And quickly, please put personnel on alert. IG INEC chairs to address the presidential candidate. Business faces cash crunch, interest rate hits 15.5%. America jails Abiodun's ex aid for stealing 20,000 identities. Ogun reacts. Uh, these are the headlines on the punch this morning. All right. Um, we would like to point out that Plus TV is not campaigning for anyone uh, right there. So just uh, bear that. Uh, in mind before you crucify us. Moving over to the Guardian newspaper, uh, it leads with this story: e the economy in economy in rare credit squeeze. Uh, CBN continues with 20-year high interest. Economy in rare credit squeeze. As CBN continues with 20-year high interest. Uh, NPR raised to 15.5 percent, highest in 20 years. That's the um, interest rate or the monetary policy rate. Uh, CBN to Debit commercial banks to effect new CRR Thursday. Uh, and Donry increase, increase rather, uh, creates opportunity for FG to mop up local funds. Job losses to worsen 
experts warn Nigerians lament soaring food prices, address supply side shocks to check inflation. Some of the writers on that story. Uh, others from The Guardian, FG, gets NSAS report two years after promises implementation. Court orders Zainek to publish names of candidates in Edo governor's faction. Wiki brings back legacy 600 aircraft abounded in Germany. It was a pomp and pageantry. Some of our rivers people went to the airport to welcome the plane. You know, with dancing and jubilation, there were banners. Banners were printed, you know, you know, with the governor's picture, and hey, we welcome back our, our, our aircraft, you know. Uh, stop including or inducing dividing Christians, Northern Elders advice, APC Tinubu. Uh, Code nullifies Ogun PDP governorship, uh, KB Central Senatorial District primaries. What does this mean? Uh, in 2023, how Nigerian politicians deceive electorate by Obi as some of the headlines on the front page of The Guardian. Let's quickly welcome our guest, Tunde Kolawale, uh, who is a legal practitioner. Tunde Kolawale, thank you very much for your time. Let's quickly uh, start thank with... Thank you for with, having me. You're welcome. Let's quickly start with this one, since uh, it falls within your domain as a, a legal a practitioner. Um, what, 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 I what's, what is your take on the court nullifying the Ogun PDP governorship primary? Um, is this something that, uh, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on this generally? When you look at the electoral law and also the INEC regulations, guiding the conduct of uh, party primaries, you will see that there are no ambiguities in those uh, laws. First and foremost, you must uh, put INEC on notice of the primaries. The forms must have been properly obtained, distributed, and filled. And of course, INEC must uh, be present where the primaries are being conducted. But you find that there are too many times, not just the PDP, when they are conducting the primaries, the, after people have obtained form, they will not put all of them on notice as regards the time and place where the primaries will be conducted. You find that there are too many times all the different political parties don't follow the rules and regulations of INEC and also the constitution of their own party. So if any aspirant is agreed, chances are that such a party will go to court and then they raise issues. And when issues are raised, and then the court finds out that the party has not complied with its own constitution, final rules and regulations, such uh, party primaries are banned to be um, uh, quashed uh, by the court. I suspect that is what has happened with regards to the Ogun primaries. Well, um, let's move away from that. Now, the Daily Trust uh, talks about uh, 23 Kaduna train passengers who are experiencing or still in the hands of their captors, I mean, six months, and they're asking that the president should live up to his promises. Well, uh, I'm not too sure that the president is ready to live up to his expectations. I'm also not too sure that our security chiefs are also ready to live up to expectations. Uh, we have been in this dilemma for more than 10 years. And I would think that after 10 years, the security chiefs, especially agencies like um, the State Security Service, that's the DSS, the military intelligence, the Nigeria Intelligence Agency, should be abreast of the sources of this insecurity that we have in the country. But sadly, they seem not to be on top of this again. If anybody is still looking towards President Buhari to find solution to our insecurity, the person is merely waiting for God. Because the president, a month or two ago, has said he is eager to go back to Casina, hand over to the next president, and take a rest. He has tied his hand on insecurity for about seven and a half years now. He has been unable to find solution. So, 
Is it a few months that is remaining that we will now be able to find solution to the insecurity? Let us just pray that uh, whoever may be coming to power in 2023, as the president, as governors, as senators, and whatever, will be people who are ready and who are eager and who have the well without to provide security for the Nigerian people. Our security agencies have been infiltrated. Better police, what have you. So, if a security agency is infiltrated, you will require to purge that security agency and then reorganize it for it to be able to deliver the services that is required by the Nigerian people. Remember, just a few weeks ago, it was in the paper that um, one dismissed officer of the State Security Service, DSS, participated in the robbing of a bullion van somewhere in the southeast. We have also in the past seen, uh, I mean, had police, uh, seen police officers being accused of participating in robbery, veto for the army. And if that has happened in some other crimes and countries, the authorities will look into the ranks of such security agencies, fish out the bad guys among them, and then uh, reorganize the agency. But have you seen that happen in this country? It doesn't happen. So long as those security agencies continue to secure the incompetent leadership that we have in the country in power, they will never be interested in making the security agencies do what they're expected to do. As of today, our security agencies are incompetent when it comes to investigating, especially discrete investigation. They are also incompetent Tundekano, in prosecuting I mean, cases. We're talking and, about, um, mm. let, let's even still stay with it. You, we're talking about the fact that the president had given assurance to families of those who mm. were kidnapped. And we're talking about. I am telling you. And don't forget that the, the president has been believed to be a man who has integrity. So we can't be saying that, you know, the president makes a pledge or, you know, gives his words and says, don't worry, we will get this persons back to you, uh, you know, within the period. It's six months and counting. And how many months before, you know, the tenure of this government ends, before he leaves office? Well, my reply to you would be, is it the president that will go into the forest? to go and rescue those people? The answer is no. It is the security people. And if the security people have been alive to their responsibility, and these bandits have been going on for so long, they would have developed a template by now to rescue people whenever they are abducted. Look at what the American people did. They came all the way from the U.S. because just one of their citizens uh, was uh, abducted. And they came to our forest there and rescued the person. If people can come all the way from the U.S., why has it been so difficult for us, the citizens, the landowners, difficult to rescue our own people? I don't know whether you have traveled to the north before. The north has no forest. They talk about forest. They are all grasslands. When you fly over the north, with an aircraft or inside the plane, you will be seen everywhere on the floor. So what is so difficult? Technologies are also there to rescue people. So I'm not too sure that I want to rely on the assurances of Mr. President. Let the President um, just begin to run, write his hand over notes. And let us pray that we have people who know about what to do come into power in 2023. Right, let's uh, go back to the nation newspaper um it's like other papers uh, give some coverage to the situation regarding moteku and the quest by governor rotimi akiridulu to procure arms for the outfit saying that of course in previous days the papers have covered you know uh, reported that he is uh, saying that uh, the, the the africans function successfully and efficiently without arms and that they will get it at all means. Uh, but the presidency today, as uh, it's stated in the nation, replying uh, Akhered who himself is an APC governor, that uh, no state can carry arms, uh, can arm its security outfits, and is called cautioning against politicization of uh, security thoughts. Well, uh, the president may be right, 
in the sense that the constitution has not given powers to any of the states to even establish a police and also arms of police. And even if the constitution has given them the power, how many of those states have the wherewithal to set up and equip those security agencies that they may be setting up in according to, I mean, in accordance with the international best practices and standards? The answer is no. Most of them are bankrupt. They haven't paid salaries for a long time now. And then, even the arms and ammunition that they are protecting and some of the security agencies that they have established, they are abusing it. Look at the number of people that they are protecting. In New York, for example, in uh, those states, for example, have, uh, the effort they have done with the pump action guns that they are carrying presently. So, I would want to say you require to amend the constitution to be able to create state police and also give them the arms and ammunition that they require to do whatever they need to do. More importantly, we must be able to set very high standards and do due diligence into people we recruit into most of these um, security outfits. The whole deputy commissioner of police has been accused of um, uh, participating or aiding and abetting drug uh, uh, trafficking. The same person has been accused of uh, aiding and abetting Yahoo Yahoo boys. So, you yeah, have also mentioned this morning the case of a dismissed uh, DSS official who participated in an armed robbery operation. I mean, a kidnapping operation in the South South. So, the crisis is a very deep one. It's a problem that you need people who have the courage, who have the foresight, and who are not ready to indulge the security chiefs with regard to the performance of their jobs. Well, I, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. You're a legal practitioner. It's on yeah. the punch among all the papers. It talks about uh, the United States courts that jails Abiodun's ex aid for stealing 20,000 identities. It's uh, a very serious embarrassment for Nigeria as a nation. You will recollect that uh, that young man is uh, said to be the deputy chief of staff to the governor of the state. And so if somebody, a high-ranking person like that, uh, has um, engaged in identity theft and fraud, then what would you think the international community will be looking at our politicians and public officials? Of course, they wouldn't have any good thing to say about it. They will begin to treat all of us with suspicion. And that is the reason when you travel outside the country, as soon as you get to the airport and you are brandishing the green passport, you are treated with the odium. You are immediately a suspect. Somebody to be watched. Well, the law has taken its course. America is not Nigeria, where you can bend the rules to satisfy and the political office orders. And more importantly too, the Abiodun's case has again opened the Pandora box that most of the people you have as politicians today have at one time or the other engaged in one form of criminality or the other. Either to raise funds for their political ambitions or to be able to live a life of affluence which they are not entitled to by virtue of their vocations. We need to, as a nation, tighten the rules, be more affirmative in the dispensation of justice, and also ensure that both the tiger and the fly, when they are caught in the web of the law, they get equal punishment. All right, Tunde Kolawale, we need to go now. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. As always, you have a great day. Yes, please.
you too. It's always an interesting time listening to you share your thoughts on uh, national issues. We look forward to having you some other time, hopefully next week. All right, we'll take a break now. And of course, we look at uh, what transpired or what happened today in history years ago. When we return, we have a first major conversation uh, talking about the kickoff of campaigning in Nigeria's uh, 2023 election cycle. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Merci.